Quantum computers, the machines that will solve every problem, revolutionize medicine, and crack open the secrets of the universe, or maybe make a slightly better cat video? Yeah, turns out the reality of quantum computing is a bit messier. The questions are countless. Why quantum computers haven't reached mainstream? Will they become practical, or even is there any use case for it? And is it now that we'll try to answer the burning question? Will we ever see quantum of computers at your local tech showroom? Hello and welcome back to QuantumFi. In today's video, we'll explain why making quantum computers work is so difficult. So let's get started. The first hurdle of this journey started almost 50 years ago. Although the promise of quantum computing was identified in the 1980s, it's yet to be realized. The reason is that quantum computers are extremely difficult to design, build, and program. Well, this is something generic. To be specific, the exact flaws were noise, faults, and loss of quantum coherence, which is critical to their operation. That's why quantum computers fail before any non-trivial program can run through to come completion. Vibrations, temperature, variations, electromagnetic waves, and other interactions with the outside world all contribute to the loss of coherence. This is also called decoherence. The decoherence eventually destroys the computer's unusual quantum features. Given the current prevalence of decoherence and other defects, modern quantum computers are unlikely to provide correct answers for programs with even modest execution times. But should we be concerned by this? Well, it depends. The competing technologies and architectures attempt to address these issues, but no known hardware platform can preserve coherence and provide the robust error correction required for large-scale computation. A breakthrough is likely several years away. Meanwhile, the billion-dollar challenge is how to generate useful results from a computer that becomes unusable before completing a standard computation. Answers to this billion-dollar question are emerging from new researches on multiple multiple fronts, with researchers in industry, academia, and government laboratories pursuing a variety of error reduction strategies. One method is to predict what an error-free computation might look like based on the outcomes of computations with varying amounts of noise. An entirely different approach, hybrid quantum classical algorithms, runs only the most performance-critical elements of a program on a quantum computer, while the rest of the program is processed on a more powerful, classical computer. These and other solutions have proven effective in dealing with the noisy environment of today's quantum computers. While traditional computers are susceptible to many types of faults, these errors can be addressed with a small amount of extra storage and logic. Quantum error correction systems exist, but they consume so many qubits that just a few qubits remain for processing. This reduces the capacity of the computing task to a mere fraction of what might be executed on defect-free hardware. To put the necessity of limiting qubit consumption into perspective, today's cutting-edge gate-based quantum computers, which use logic gates similar to those present in the digital circuits contained in the computer, smartphone, or tablet you're watching this video on, have only 50 qubits. That is only a small proportion of the classical bits available to your device, which is generally hundreds of billions managing defects to maximize results. The difficulty is that quantum physics tests are intuition. As a result, we need help determining which algorithms are better for completing meaningful tasks. To address these issues, researchers are creating a mechanism for inventing and optimizing algorithms that perform valuable tasks on noisy quantum computers. Algorithms are lists of operations that instruct a computer to perform something similar to a food recipe. Compared to classical algorithms, Quantum algorithms should be kept as short as possible, and they should also be ideally adapted to the specific flaws and noise regime of a given hardware device. This allows the algorithm to complete more processing steps within the time constraints before decoherence, which reduces the probability of a valid result to almost zero. The fundamental aim is to limit the number of gates in order to complete execution before decoherence and other flaws, which significantly reduce the possibility of success. 
success. Researchers employed machine learning to assemble a quantum circuit into an optimum short replica designed for a certain quantum computer. Until recently, they used machine learning approaches on classical computers to find shorter versions of quantum programs. In a recent breakthrough, Los Alamos lab researchers developed a strategy for compiling their own quantum algorithms using currently accessible quantum computers. This approach eliminates the significant processing cost required to mimic quantum dynamics on classical processors. This approach produced shorter algorithms, which reduced the effects of noise. This machine learning method could also compensate for faults in a manner that is unique to the algorithm and hardware platform. This smart algorithm could also favor better qubits. In that case, machine learning generates a generic method to complete the prescribed task on that computer with the fewest processing resources and logic gates. The program can now run for longer periods of time, and this was the struggle behind its optimization. But this doesn't end here. Microsoft scientists claim to have made a breakthrough that brings practical quantum computers one step closer to reality, but experts believe the field is still in its early stages. Teams all over the world are racing for this objective, and as we saw, significant error rates have hampered efforts to develop a functional quantum computer. However, they've yet to show the world even one working qubit, let alone numerous qubits running in quantum circuits. Microsoft engineers stated that they have developed a novel method for representing a logical qubit with hardware stability. The gadget has the ability to induce a phase of matter known as Majorana Zero Modes, or a fermion. Using this form of materials can help create quantum supercomputers with low error rates. Simply, Microsoft claims to have developed a way to represent qubits in superposition as well as the hardware stability required to legitimately begin moving toward a commercial quantum computer. The problems in the basics. The physics of a viable qubit, the quantum analog of the standard binary bit, is crucial to quantum computing. Qubits operate in the field of quantum physics, whereas traditional computing is based on classical theory. Conventional computers operate at room temperature, and the bit is the fundamental unit of storage and calculation. It's either a one or a zero, and strings of bits can represent numbers, letters, images, audio, and so on, all of which can be stored and processed by ordinary computer processors. Quantum computers operate in the world of quantum subatomic physics, where something may be both a particle and a wave at the same time. Objects at this tiny scale can be in two places at the same time, and there are limits to how accurately a physical quantity's value can be anticipated before measurement, given a complete set of initial conditions. Quantum computers use qubits, which deal with all potential values of each qubit at the same time, but in a way that the quantum processor can comprehend in order to solve complicated problems efficiently. Using qubits in computers is quite tough. Qubits are extremely sensitive to noise and often only maintain their quantum state for very short periods of time. The largest quantum computers now accessible are made up of only a few hundred noisy physical qubits. Quantum algorithms use a process known as interference to skew those unknown features and bias the interactions of numerous qubits, increasing the possibility that they will arrive at a final state containing a solution to the problem they are attempting to solve. That's where entanglement comes into play. The spooky connections between qubits create a pattern of interference where bad answers destroy one other and cancel out, while correct answers are reinforced. Now, dozens of rival companies are investing in qubit technology development, and there are potentially over a dozen distinct qubit technology methods in the works. The power was established back then. Google's quantum computing team stated in 2019 that it has achieved quantum supremacy, the ability of a quantum processor to perform tasks that a classical computer cannot. According to the researchers, its 54-qubit Sycamore processor solved the problem in 3 minutes and 20 seconds that would have taken 10,000 years to crack on the world's most powerful classical computer. This is not to claim that Google's quantum computer, or any other that has achieved quantum supremacy since is capable of doing useful tasks. The problem Google solved was quite unknown, and on the same lines, Microsoft's claim appears to be both interesting and controversial, since it claims to be fixing critical error rate concerns by depending on a recently discovered elusive particle. This implies that extensive research and development will still be required. 
The unpalatable truth is that in quantum computing, size matters. Data holding qubits must maintain their sensitive quantum states for an extended period of time while avoiding external factors such as heat and vibration, which can cause them to decohere, resulting in computational errors. This is a problem that can only be solved by scaling up. According to current estimates in big programmable quantum computers, the majority of qubits, possibly up to five and six, will be used for error correction rather than processing. That that means we'll need up to a million qubits before we can achieve anything truly useful. Keeping so many qubits suitably cold or preserving all of their quantum states long enough to do computation is a massive engineering issue. It could take decades, but the major players are moving in the right direction, so we should stay positive. And this was it for today, guys. Hey, like if you enjoyed our video, comment down your opinion on the future of quantum computers, and suggest which topic you want to see next on the channel. Subscribe to Get Quantified. Stay tuned as we'll be back soon with another important video. Till then, keep watching QuantumFi.